Well, howdy. Welcome to live drawing number three with Tyler. This is not actually live. This is happening in the future because I'm just doing a screen recording. Um, if you've been following along, I have drawn five little characters so far um, of this little fan art sheet that is going around an illustrator social media world. And I'm on my last one. And my suggestion was a Powerpuff Girls villain. And so I've done a rough draft of the villain called him, if you remember that villain. Um, oh, and let's play the sound cue. This is him. All right, so let's go ahead and get drawing. If you have not seen one of these before, I am using a ton of layers for all of this. I have my rev draft here in a light blue, so it's easier to draw on top of. And I have an ink reference layer, and we're just gonna go ahead and dive in. Um, the Powerpuff Girls have a really nice, like, minimalist style, so I think this will be pretty, um, a pretty quick draw. But you know what? I'm often proving myself wrong and drawing way more, and for way longer than I need to. But my goal is to take what is a pretty simple and stylistically like good character and try to find ways to put my own spin on it. What I did just there was what's called a quick line. That's where you drag and hold and the line will snap to a particular shape. If it has a very obvious curve, like um, this one just now, it will snap to a curve, which is what I made it do. Now, normally, I'm pretty sure you can draw this character um, you can draw this character's head as like a perfect oval and then just like cut out a little pie piece, but I'm going to try, well, I'm not trying, I'm guessing what I'm doing is I'm um, taking something kind of similar, like I could almost connect this, but I'm gonna extend the chin a little bit um, just to change things up. Went to a straight line there. And I'm going to do something a little different. Let's extend this out. I'm using um, the Studio Pen also. I've made a couple adjustments to it, but generally this is the same Studio Pen that is native. I'm going to erase this. I'm going to give the character kind of an underbite and see how I like that. <laughs> uh, I don't love it. Okay, let's go back a second. Maybe there's a, a still more fun way to do this. Normally the teeth are just like this. Let's try this, see how this looks. I go in halfway with a plan when I'm doing these so far. <laughs> oh, that looks that looks pretty bad. Okay, we're just gonna. Well, you know what? They designed it the way it was on purpose and for a reason, and I'm just gonna stick with it. Who knew that teeth would throw me off so much? Okay. Good enough. Better than good. Good enough. All right, we'll get this little Jafar <laughs> thing going on here. Doop. Great. And I'm going to draw the eyes. And normally the eyes do not bounce off the head, but I kind of like when I like when eyes do that. I think it's fun. Let's 
So we're going to draw that. Let's go ahead and get that widow's peak in there. That can be a little deeper. drag that in just like that and then I'm gonna cut a little pie piece out of this using a tiny eraser normally pie pieces are cut out of the same side but let's see how that looks eh, kinda weird let's do the same side maybe they can sharpen that just a little bit Close. Let's go right here. When you zoom in, it's a lot of trial and error to see if you've like done the right thing and at the right size. To try to keep these mostly the same. Yeah. A little bit off again. Let's see. Sorry, you're probably you're like with the teeth thing. You're probably really thinking I'm like. I don't know what I'm doing. And to be fair, you're kind of right. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna stick with that. I think that's good. <laughs> um, him also has some fun lips. Great. Okay, that's the face. Oh, we gotta get this ear bit. And really, you know what? That's, that's all the face that we need to do. So let's move on to this like fluff that's around um, his, his collar here. some more curly cues to this whole thing. Nah, okay, never mind. That's that's good. All right, and let's draw these lobster pinchers. Almost gonna go into Donkey Kong territory there. But we're gonna try to avoid his name. I mean, covering up his name, I mean. We can say Donkey Kong's name, it's fine. Oops, that's an eraser. Let's grab that pen. There's one monster claw. Done pretty quickly. I'm going to try not to dip into my They Might Be Giants frame there.
this can go behind John's head. That's fine. Hmm, actually, according to my rough draft, that should be slightly differently placed. The arm should be. So let's use our select tool. We're going to move this down just a little bit, and let's start drawing actually right here. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> That's good. Him has kind of like a Santa outfit, I guess. Like a very, like a sexy Santa outfit. So let's go ahead and draw that belt. I'm going to do... Um, the belt buckle a little bit off, which actually is how it is in the cartoon, according to this reference photo I have. I am, I am not drawing this from memory. I wish I could say I was. And we're going to draw one leg going over here. We're going to draw one leg coming off. the uh, the screen or out of the out of the panel because you know it's just fun we're just having fun here and then there's the rest of that boot so it's stepping out of the panel um, cool, let's turn off that rough draft and see how it looks. I think that is going to be good. Now, um, if you haven't seen if you haven't seen me do one of these before, um, maybe you've noticed that I am making sure that every single time I draw a shape, it's enclosed. Um, that is not necessarily like the that's not like a, a right or wrong way to do things, but because of the way that I'm going to color everything in, it's really helpful if all of my shapes are enclosed because I'm, I'm making my ink layer a reference layer, which means that I will be able to, in other layers below or above um, my ink layer, I'll be able to use like fill options or select options, and whatever I do will refer to the reference layer, hence the name. So I'm going to be doing a color drop um, way of coloring. So I'm just dragging and dropping color out of uh, the color chooser, which we haven't really taken a look in it at yet. But it's going to make coloring a breeze. Okay, so there's the panel. I am drawing above um, this original panel here, as you can see. All right, so uh, there's my ink reference layer. I think that is going to be good. I don't think I need to erase anything else. All right, let's move on. Uh, we're going to go into our main color section. You can see if I turn on and off main color, um, I have a lot of control. You know, layers give you a lot of control over what's happening. And I like to keep things like shadow lines, details, background color, base color, all that stuff. I like to keep it separated just so I have a lot of control. So let's go ahead. Um, I don't, when I'm using, because I color in black lines, I don't normally like to keep things black, but I'll make an exception um, and try it out for this character. So I'm just dragging and dropping, it's filling in. I like to make sure usually uh, once every couple of minutes that I'm in the correct layer because it uh, really saves you some time if you are not dragging and dropping things in the incorrect layer. All right, so kind of green eyes. That's fine. Let's go ahead and do that. 
And let's see if we can use the harmony tool to find a good pink for this. That's purple. Mm, that's not what I want. Let's instead of complementary, try. Not analogous. Here we go. That's what I'm looking for. Great, great, great. Let's go a little darker. Normally, so the reference color I'm looking at is definitely a little more like this. So we'll just, we'll just do that. Um, it's even more like orangey and bright than this, but I'm going to stick with this color. Just to, you know, switch things up. So let's go back to classic. Um, let's choose like an incredibly light version of that color for the fluff over here. We'll use this darkness slider, go a little bit darker for inside these little hoops. All right, really easy drag and drop. But you can also like I'm doing here and you can see the brush cursor maybe. Um, you can also just color in when it's appropriate. Okay, I'm going to hold my finger down on the screen to reselect that color, even though I do have a history um, template that is automatically built over here. And let's go real red. We're going to go the same direction, but extremely red. We'll choose like this uh, kind of upsetting bright red color. <laughs> So pretty harsh compared to the rest. That's interesting. I kind of like that. All right, and then let's go just a little bit lighter for this underclaw. Actually, what they do, let's select that again. They make it a little bit orange according to this reference photo. Ooh, that is so ugly. Okay, what do I want to do here? Nope. Ugh, fine. Uh, no, I shouldn't say ugh, fine. I should be happy. Okay, well, that's good. I like that. Just a little bit darker. I'm, I'm going to add shadow to this whole thing anyway, so we're going to be switching up the, col the color palette a little bit here pretty soon. All right, so it looks so there's the base color, right? That's all colored in. Um, let's go ahead and give it a fun background. I think since everything is already like very red and pink, um, we should choose something different than that. Something that's going to complement. So I'm going to choose this pink. Let's go back to my harmony tool, and maybe something like this purple would fit really well. So I'm in my background layer, again, just dragging and dropping. You'll notice the rest of these have some sort of like detail on them, and I think I am going to do that as well. For that, I'm going to go to, instead of background detail, I put a, um, I've, I've put like a, <laughs> you can see weird stuff happens. I've, uh, we're going to go back to, oopsie, I'm undoing a lot of things I didn't mean to. There we go. Um, I've put like a filter on that, so I'm not going to mess with that. I'm just going to go to layer 11, which is a different background detail section I've designed for myself. And let's go to classic. Actually, we'll just go to plain black. Find maybe a texture that would be kind of interesting to play with. Some of these Procreate textures um, have some really like crazy things going on. Like, um, oh, I just lost it. They, uh, there's a there's a brush called like rectangles or something that's like really bizarre. Not rectango.
There's also just so many things. Hard to hard to find them sometimes. I'm just kind of poking through spires. That's interesting. Okay, so let's go ahead and choose the right layer in my uh, selection area. I tapped on that little you know ribbon S thing. We're gonna go to automatic. And I'm making all these areas blue. That is just determining that they are selected. And now, when I tap on my brush um, again, everything is like grayed out, right? Those animated lines are happening. So I'm coloring everywhere except for in those areas. Okay, so now that I've played with that, I know that that's probably not what I want to do. black Let's see how that looks eh, yeah, I kind of like that it's kind of spooky I don't know why I'm trying to add green. That's probably not a good idea at all. <laughs> Very ugly. Okay. Um, we're just going to leave it like that. That's fine. Now let's get to some fun stuff. We're going to add shadow. So I'm going to go back to my studio pin and my inking section. I'm going to go back to this layer labeled opacity. This is where I have put shadow. Um, for everybody else. And I'm just going to add some shadow um, here and there. Actually, you know what? Let's do something. I'm, I'm changing it up on the spot. Let's do something different. We're going to go to um, it is vintage newsprint. Here we go. This is a native brush in Procreate. And I'm going to use the freehand select tool. And I'm going to just draw little areas where I want my brush to go. I'm going to resize my newsprint. And then check that out. Newsprint. Pretty nifty. So I'm just drawing, I'm drawing technically underneath my outline here. So I'll never um, draw like above or distract from the original line work, which is pretty handy. Let's go ahead and just do this leg. See, this is this is like my some of my favorite stuff to do. I find this part really fun. Just kind of choosing where these things go. We'll get some shadow underneath the chin. too much. We're going to try that again. Oops. We're going to use the select tool once more. And maybe we'll do a little bit on the bottom here also. We'll see how that looks. 
Maybe that's gonna look like overkill. But we don't know till we try. Yeah, it's okay. Maybe I'll do something similar over here. Okay, what are we missing? Do some stuff underneath the ear to kind of match the chin. We could have this fluff casting a shadow. Just a little tiny shadow here in the elbow pits. This makes me feel like actually we need to do a little bit more over here. Once I get started, I'm like, I have to stop myself from doing too much sometimes. And okay, I feel pretty, I feel pretty good about that. I like that a lot actually. Okay, so um, in my top layer, I'm gonna take my normal Studio pen, and I'm gonna add this. And also in the details section, why don't we, actually, sorry, in the opacity section. Okay, yeah, that's where I put that. Um, let's go ahead and put some like some shine on these big metal pinchers. Finally, in the top layer, we'll add some shine on these boots. Pen is doing kind of a weird thing when I. Okay. Cool. All right. I think we're done. I would say that is him. And uh, if you're curious, we can watch a little time lapse. Let's see how long this takes um, of the whole process. Let me skip ahead a little bit to. There we go. Um, how we drew everybody. So there is Jerry Garcia, um, famous for being named named after an ice cream flavor. Um, I added some different detail to him. I for his hair I used um, the oh what's it called? Uh, it's called like the dry brush. I'm pretty sure. It's in the inking section. I like it a lot. It has a lot of texture. Francine from Arthur, a show that I've been ridiculed for having never watched as a kid, but I was too busy watching Street Sharks, so I don't know what to tell you. There's DK. I'm using the same um, utensil for him as I did for uh, 
Jerry, I mean. This is Calamaria from Cuphead. This is my first, uh, this is from my first tutorial. If you want, calling them a tutorial is pretty generous, but live drawing video. Um, so that's my first attempt. If you're really feeling like uh, supporting a uh, <laughs> an experiment, you can watch that. But that was a fun one. I love Cuphead. And I love drawing in the 30s style, which you may have noticed just from the other things that I've drawn. My second um, live draw was They Might Be Giants. While drawing them, I resisted just talking about their history and how much I like them. So if you watch that video, I guess you're welcome that I did not do all of that. Uh, but they're real fun to draw. And then you um, have seen this last one already. I guess They Might Be Giants is not quite done yet. But all six of these drawings, um, I've basically done the same thing. Um, I have a, a method that I that I work with. It's rough draft, ink layer, make that ink layer a reference layer, drag and drop color, apply detail in other layers so that I have total control over those layers, and I can adjust them as I need to. I'm adding shadow, detail, texture, depending on the character. And I'm undoing a lot. I'm undoing and redoing a lot of things as an experiment. And that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this. I, I uh, appreciate you watching if you did. And uh, maybe we'll do more. I've done these three just to see how I liked it. And I've liked it okay. So maybe there's more coming down the pipeline. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching and have a good one.